Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the Windows Admin Center. We're going to give you an overview of what it does, and then we'll go through a demonstration and show you some of the things you could do with it. All right, so the Windows Admin Center, also known as WAC, is Microsoft's browser-based management console for Windows systems. It brings together tools such as the Event Viewer, Services, Device Manager, PowerShell, and more into one united interface that you could access through a web browser. All right, so you can deploy it in two major ways. So if you're in a business environment on a domain or enterprise network, uh, you could do that, which will provide you with centralized IT management. Or if you're just a home user or small office, you could implement it on a standalone PC or home network. But just keep in mind, it's going to have to be a Windows Pro version because it won't run on Windows Home. All right, so why would you use Windows Admin Center? So if you're in a domain or enterprise environment, so it gives administrators a central hub to remotely manage servers and workstations without needing remote desktop sessions. You could use it for things such as server configuration, cluster management, role and feature installation, monitoring and troubleshooting, remote PowerShell and automation, managing VM hosts and virtual machines, certificate and update management, and Azure hybrid integrations. So this reduces the need for MMC, Microsoft Management Console, Snap-ins, uh, reduces remote desktop usage, and provides quick, low latency access to Windows management tasks. All right, so if you're using it on your home network, you could use it for things such as monitoring system performance, managing services and processes, remote managing other PCs on the same network, file browsing between machines, running remote PowerShell, viewing event logs, storage management, and checking hardware health. So even a home user can use it to manage a home server, NAS-like PC, or a media server. So when you first load it, you'll get the overview dashboard. So we'll be seeing this in a minute here. So this page is the first stop whenever you connect to a machine. It shows you live CPU and memory graphs, network throughput, storage usage, running processes, OS information, installed updates, hardware details, and uptime. So if you're on a domain, it's great for quickly diagnosing overloaded servers, high CPU usage, failing disks, or network saturation. And for a standalone or home use situation, it's useful to monitor a home PC for performance issues or check how a media server is performing and everything updates in real time. All right, so now we're going to hop on a Windows computer here and check it out. All right, so you can see it loads the page here, and obviously it's a non-secure website, but you don't have to worry about it because you're just using this locally here. All right, so here is our one computer, the gateway computer here on the main screen. And it shows you the computer name, the type, the last connection date, and who you're managing it as. So just keep in mind when you're using this, uh, you can only use it with local users or domain users. You can't use this with Microsoft user accounts. All right, so we're going to connect to this main computer here, the one we're running it on. All right, so here is our main page here with the name, domain. So if this is part of our work group, it's not on a domain, operating system, the version, how much RAM, disk space, processors, one logged in user, and you can see our real time CPU and memory. Network, disk, other disk. So this is a nice feature here. And then any alerts. So you can see here your Windows Server has applications that have crashed. So it shows you what happened here and when. And then you can view all if you want to see some more. And then at the top here, you can restart the computer, shut it down, edit the ID, and refresh the screen. And then up here we have notifications and some settings. You can see here we're not using an Azure account. Language settings, personalization if you want to do dark mode, suggestions. So you can turn off these suggestions if you don't want to see them. Development, performance profile. Down the line here. All right, so going back here. All right, so while we have this real-time monitoring going here, we're going to delete some files. You 
can see the disk usage jumped a little bit there while we were doing that because it was on the C drive. And you can see it dropped off after the files were deleted. You can see the CPU spiked a little bit as well. Let's say we open something like Excel here. You can see the CPU utilization is going up while it's opening. Same for memory. Let me close it. It should drop down a little bit in a moment. Like so. All right, so you can see it's a nice way to monitor real time performance from your computer without having to use Task Manager. All right, so now let's try another example here. Let's open up Notepad. All right, so now we're going to go to Processes. Let's sort this by name so we can find it easily here. Go down to N. You can see we have Notepad running here. We could right click on it and process. And yes. And now it closes. So you could end tasks just like you can from Task Manager as well. All right, now let's go over to Services. All right, so now let's just do a search for Windhawk since it's installed on this machine. All right, so you can see it's running here. So we could simply right click on it and restart it. See it restarts the service right there. It tells you it's running. We could also stop it as well if we want. All right, so now let's check out some event viewer logs here. Under events. It'll say no log channel selected until you pick something on the left hand side here. All right, let's go to Windows Logs and then System. And then we get Filter, let's say Warnings. And now we have just Warnings. So as you can see, the same type of thing you could do from Event Viewer itself. All right, now let's go over to the Device Manager section here under Devices. Let's say we want to check out our network adapters. You can see we have them here. The Bluetooth, the Intel Gigabit network adapter, and the Microsoft Kernel Debug network adapter. And you can right-click and disable and update drivers, just like you can in Device Manager. And of course, you can search for items as well. All right now, let's check out the network section here. So here's our Ethernet connection here, which is up. So you can choose this one, see the details for it. IP address, no IPv6. Gateway address, and so on. And you click on settings. You could actually change the settings here. All right now, let's go to the files section here. You can see we could browse our files here as well. Make a new folder if we want. And there it is right there. You can also make a new file as well, just a blank file. If you highlight something here, you can rename it, upload, download, cut, copy, paste, delete, share, and so on. And we have your file shares here, if you have any. You can see here we have this class spreadsheet, club dues, and all these other ones shared. And you could edit the share if you want, remove the share, go to the settings. All right, let's check out the registry setting next here.
So the same hives as you would see with the registry editor. If you click on add value here, you could give it a name. If you want to do a D word value or new binary value or string value, you could do that as well. Then of course you could come here, modify it and delete values as well. All right, let's check out apps next. So apps and features. All right, so you see when you go here, this says preview. So it's not quite ready yet. And I've noticed that this is kind of spins for a while. So depending on when you're watching this, uh, it may or may not work. So you could be able to see your apps from here and remove them, search them, and so on. And then you have the features section here. So if you want to enable or disable certain features, you could do that as well. So I just wanted to show you that this exists in case it's uh, working later on when you actually try it yourself. All right, so now let's go down to PowerShell. So you could actually run PowerShell commands from here. For example, get process, sort CPU descending. So if we want to see the top five processes running, that way you don't have to open a separate PowerShell window to run these commands. All right, let's check out storage now. Close PowerShell out there. I have disk zero, which is our C drive. So you can see the capacity, location, partitions, partition style, so it's GPT. Same here for the secondary disk. We create a volume if we want, create a VHD, virtual hard drive. Look at the volumes. So you can see here, we can see things like our uh, recovery partition and system partition. And if you click on it, it'll take you back to the detail section. And of course, there are other categories here on the left. I know it's jumping around a bit, but I just wanted to show you some of the more important ones here. But you can see they have other options such as the firewall and local users and groups. All right now, we have some notifications up here, which just told us what we were doing. Created a folder, restarted the service. Ended a process, no errors, nothing active. And the info section matches everything here in the all section. And we also have an option here for all connections if you want to see server manager, if you have it installed, and cluster manager. But if you don't have them configured, nothing's going to show there. All right, so as you can see, it's a very nice tool, and it's just an easy way to manage your computer all from one location without having to open up specific apps or management consoles for these specific tools. So even if you're using this on your own computer at home, it's definitely worth checking out. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you can download the Windows Admin Center, and you can see how it works for you. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.